So what is biological filtration? Well, the traditional definition refers to the nitrogen cycle. Um, you know, ammonia gets converted to nitrite, nit get nitrite to nitrate, and then you have denitrification, the reversal of that. Well, in fact, biological filtration is a bit more involved than that. Um, first of all, where, where it occurs, um, it occurs in external filters, in the sand and rock, various substrates in contact with the water, in the pumps and the tubes, anywhere that the water is moving. Uh, biological filtration does act on organic substances in the water as well as inorganic substances. It's a process of decomposition, which is called dissimilation, or assimilation, where, whereby creatures literally eat as food these substances that are accumulating in the water. So, um, many of us, you know, when you, you think about biological filtration, you think that, um, how shall I say this, that it's the job of these bacteria. It's their function. For us as aquarists, that is true. But these bacteria exist in nature. They're in soils and streams in the ocean. And it's not their function to purify the water. It's their function to live. And they live by consuming and breaking down these compounds. It's only because they exist that we can keep an aquarium. I hope you can understand that differentiation. And it's just, it's, it's luck. <laughs> you know, if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be able to keep an aquarium. And they do more than the nitrogen cycle. Uh, which I'll, uh, it's a subject I'll get into in a little bit. But I wanted to show you a, a, a drawing that um, explains how biological filtration works in a sand bed. Uh, what you see here, this is a view of an aquarium from the side, and this is what we could call a deep sand bed, maybe four inches or so. Um, let me see in millimeters. So 15 centimeters, how many inches is that? Six inches. Okay, so you got six inches right there. There's a little pile of sand here in the, in the middle, and water flow at 10 centimeters a second. What you have here is a buildup of pressure right in front of that pile, and then a little vacuum here right on the, the back side, and then a little buildup in pressure there. And that sets up water flow, where at the high pressure zone, the water coming here enters the sand. There's a little arrow that's entering the sand. In the low pressure zone, water within the sand gets sucked and pulled right up out. Over here, this other high pressure zone, there's more water entering again. And if you were to inject dye into the sand bed in a layer right down here, three inches down, you would see the dye get pulled up right here, out that way. Um, if you put some dark, and this was white sand, and you put some mud or black sand right on top, you would see it enter the sand right here. Um, so that just demonstrates typical flow. And what happens, of course, is as that water flows through the sand, um, bacteria develop here that consume oxygen, break down uh, the waste. So you don't need an under gravel filter uh, to use a sand bed. We all know that. All you need is water moving. Now, you could imagine that not only would a pile of sand on a flat surface create that, but any live rock that you put on a sand bed is going to create the same high pressure, low pressure effect. Have you ever noticed if you move a live rock that's been in an aquarium for a while in the sand, there's a whole lot of detritus accumulating there. You know why? It's this reason. See, the advec this is called advection. Any detritus that comes along here gets stuck right there. If you've ever gone on a, a coral reef and turned over rocks, you'll notice that sea cucumbers, they tend to live right under the rocks. Well, having a rock over your head is a good protection against um, predators, uh, but it's also a good place to live if you feed on detritus. So that's why little sea cucumbers and serpent stars live there. They then process the sand that's here. Not only are they feeding on detritus, um, diatoms, um, phytoplankton in the water gets evicted right at, right at the base of live rocks, so you, they have a continuous source of food. In fact, they are really technically filter feeders, but instead of having the filter feeder apparatus themselves, they're letting the sand do the filter feeding, and then their deposit feeders, they're eating the sand to get the food that's trapped in. But that's another subject.
I wanted to get into the other area of biological filtration. Um, back in 1991-92, I was hired to consult uh, on a project called uh, Space Biosphere. Some of you may be familiar with this in the uh, Arizona, in the mountains in Arizona, uh, a town called Oracle. Some really um, creative and bizarre people built a, an enormous greenhouse and they locked up some people for a couple of years. They were called biospherians and these were scientists um, and they were working with architects and engineers and biologists and they created this biome. They had a desert, a savanna, an ocean with a reef, a uh, mangrove, a uh, rainforest, all of this in this structure and living quarters for the biospherians. They had aquaculture and farms. And I was consulted, um, you'll never guess why. A um, million gallon aquarium, roughly the same size as the uh, Great Barrier Reef Aquarium. And it was set up, uh, consulted with the same people who set up the Great Barrier Reef Aquarium. And they had a problem. Does anybody know what the problem was? Very common problem. Red slime algae. <laughs> it was covering everything. Million gallon aquarium with red slime algae. So they brought me out there and said, what can we do about this? And I looked at it and I looked at the system and I said, I can solve this really, really quickly. Um, but we have to see if you have what you need because this was a sealed experiment. They couldn't just go out to the hardware store and get anything. It, they had to work on it with what they had already in the greenhouse. And it turns out that they had 15 foot long, 12-inch uh, wide uh, PVC pipes, and they had air compressors. So I said, we're good to go. Uh, do you have any air stones? Yes. OK. So they made some giant protein skimmers. And literally within 10 days, there wasn't any red slime algae. And the biospherians said that the crud that, that the skimmers pulled out was just thick, really, really thick. So this tank had a huge accumulation of dissolved organics. And putting the skimmer on there solved that problem. But that's not the reason why I have this picture here. I, I wanted to talk about something that really caught my eye when I was consulting there. And this was the soil bed reactors. The engineers who designed the closed system there figured out that if you're going to seal people inside a greenhouse, that any paint, any plastic um, uh, was going to be giving off volatile organic substances. And these substances were air pollution that would be toxic to the people. Uh, so they figured out that they could use biological filtration to deal with that. And so what they did is they made soil bed reactors. Basically what they, they were was putting soil in a, a shallow system, having plants growing in it. Uh, they had a, a plenum, although this is nothing like the plenum in Jobert's system, it was basically a sump. Um, well, well, the plenum is the open space that connected the air to the blower, but below that was a sump with water, and they used uh, that to keep the soil moist. And so with this air blower in that plenum space, it, it was uh, pushing out the air, that created a vacuum that drew air through the soil, which is very much like a trickle filter or an undergravel filter, same idea. And bacteria living in the soil would evolve. Uh, so the, the, it's, they're not changing species, but they would adapt to assimilate or decompose the various uh, volatile organic substances in the air. So when I saw this, I thought, oh, that's got to be happening in our aquariums. We know it does that when you set up a new aquarium and you've got ammonia, the bacteria develop and they, they break down or assimilate it. Um, and then nitride and nitrate, so that already happens. But then what about all the organic compounds, especially in a reef aquarium where you have chemical warfare between soft corals, hard corals, algae, all those things. All of that stuff has to be dealt with. Well, of course, the bacteria living in the tank break that stuff down, and that is why we can have a reef aquarium. Okay, change the subject. What about Ganeopora? Uh, 